everybody. Welcome back. It's Donna from Donna's Dreamworks. And I'm here to, this morning to show you a haul. I kind of hit the jackpot when I went to the Dollar Tree in my next town. I have a Dollar Tree that's less than half a mile from my house, but it didn't have um, a lot of the things out uh, that some of the others do. And so I went into the next town and I did hit the jackpot as far as the fall uh, decorating uh, items. So I just wanted to share them with you. Um, I got a couple of stems of flowers. These are pretty. They're like, they're called mini mums, but they have a little vine on them too, as, as well as the flower. And they're really a pretty burgundy. It looks kind of reddish, brighter red in the camera light, but they're really a burgundy. Uh, and I picked up some more sunflowers, but they're the nice dark orange sunflowers. So they'd be very pretty. And I have two or three. I have one big lantern swag to do. Um, uh, more of a bow with some decorating. I don't really put a swag on my outdoor lantern. The one I really do is one in the kitchen on the table. And then I have two type of centerpieces that both have candles in them, but they're not lanterns. And so I'm going to be working on those too. And then at last I have my three-tiered tray in my kitchen that I decorate for every season. And so I picked up a whole lot and I don't actually know what is going to be used where yet, but I just wanted to make sure that we got it when we could get it. So uh, next thing I got was some of these maple leaves, but these are pretty. They have all of the little berries in them. Sorry, I'm going to find the camera. They have all the little berries in them that are pretty, and the berries are actually uh, sort of a muted greeny gold and some gold that look redder in the camera, but so I got two of those, and I got two of this color leaf with some berries. It, it is different than the other one. It is also called a maple bouquet, but the leaf color is different. It's got, it's got more uh, it's darker muted greens and oranges there. Okay, on with some more leaves. These are really pretty. These are kind of like, um, well, I'm getting untangled. These are grape leaves. And so they're a different shape. And they're pretty. Let's see if I can. And they're, they're again, there are different shades of the fall colors. Fall colors are so pretty. Then I got some really bright orange ones and these have pumpkins. There's, a pumpkin on, there's two sprays here and there's a pumpkin on both of them. So that's kind of nice. I did get one uh, of the marigolds. These are called marigolds. They, they really look a lot like a chrysanthemum to me, but they're pretty and they have some pretty colors on it. Uh, two of the dark green leaves and these have, uh, you can see a, some berries and a gourd on them, which is kind of cute. And I did pick up one little um, garland, a maple leaf garland, and it's only five feet, but I do have a small um, burlap wreath that I put on my kitchen wall and it's not very big and it's not very dimensional and so I think this will look really cute around the outside. I'll share it with you. I have the wreath made um, but I don't have this on it yet 
And I wasn't going to put anything else on it because there's a sign in the middle that's quite big that says, I don't know, happy harvest or happy fall or something. Um, and the, the area that I put this up on is not very big. So the, the, I keep the wreath kind of um, small in stature too. So the, the area itself is not huge, but and I have three good size uh, decorations there. So I have to be cognizant of how big I make things. So that will look nice. So that's all of my leaves. Then I found these, which are so cute. These pumpkins, aren't they cute? And they all have some berries. So I'm planning to use that one let me see if I can get you up close. And they're good size. So I have four of them. And I'm planning to use those in the tray at the bottom of my lantern. So they'll look really nice. And I have some other pumpkins that I can use in my three tier um, de decorated tray in the kitchen. But I also bought some of the hay bales. I, th I think you've seen those other people have uh, hauled them also. But you know, these will look really cute in my three tiered fountain, my three tiered um, decoration. And maybe have, if I can find some little something that would sit on the top of it. Right now I have a birdhouse with a bird, uh, two of them, I think, uh, on it. So we'll get back with maybe something a little different. Maybe, a, um, I don't know, maybe a little scarecrow if I can find one that's small enough would be pretty in there. I picked up four of these because I don't know where I'm going to use them, but they were too cute not to pick up. Look at these little owls. For a dollar. Aren't they cute? And this one has the green hat on. Oh, Chelsea's coming to, to join us. And the other one has sort of a burnt orange hat on. Get that out of his face. But they are so cute. And they're, oh, I'd say they're probably a good five inches tall. And so they'll look cute. I might use them on a wreath. I might use them on my lantern. Or I might use one in my uh, three-tiered decoration. So lots of choices, but I got four of them. Now, I, like I said, I don't know where they're going, but I got four of them wherever they go. Um, I did pick up some ribbon. They had a lot of their ribbons out. And so for the, I'm thinking this for the bow in the kitchen uh, let's see if I can get it. And it really is um, pretty. It's a plaid, but it has the green and the gold and the, and the bronze colors in it. So I got two of them because there's only nine feet in one of these. And then to go with it, I got just a plain burlap. So I think that that will make a pretty bow. A muted bow, you know, the one that's out there now, um, and I can insert a picture, is bright yellow with black you know, because it's a summer one. But this will be a little bit more muted, and I think it'll look really pretty. So I picked up two of each of those. Then I picked up some of their mesh. And I got the green, and they all have a gold um, line, you know, foil in them. Orange and gold. And I'm planning to use these for one of my candle uh, centerpieces, doing the. Um, you know, I'm using the small wire, small flat wire frame and doing the curly method. I did pick up 
two of each, I think, yes. Because basically, because they only had two green. They had more of the gold and the orange, but they only had two green. So I picked up everything they had as far as that goes, and I don't know if I'll have enough to make the full wreath. But, well, it's not really a wreath, it's a candle holder type of thing. Um, but we'll start it out, and if I run out, then I'll have to find another dollar store that has some more green um, and see what I can do. But I'll, I'll probably uh, film making that the next time I get going on uh, some fall decor. Actually, what I did yesterday, if you believe it, I made a puffy Christmas wreath. And basically, uh, what I have made is just the base of the wreath. And I can put a picture in here to show you. Um, Um, I don't have it decorated. I don't even know exactly what I'm going to put on it for decoration. But I used that jute mesh that you saw me uh, haul from craftoutlet.com. And I used the poof method and I used 14 inch poofs. And let me tell you, this is one big wreath. The 14 inch poofs with that um, uh, jute mesh really uh, stand out because it's it's quite a stiff product in it so it, it really lends itself to something huge so I'm going to see what I'm going to do with it and I haven't made up my mind I just was really kind of curious to see how that jute was going to work um, and so I put that out and did it up last night while I was while we were enjoying uh, tropical storm Emily who didn't do anything except give us some rain, but a few send us showers. <clears throat> we actually didn't have more than, not even two and a half inches um, from the whole event. Um, I, if I lived closer to the Tampa area, it could have been a little bit worse, but there wasn't much in the way of winds or anything here. I'm too far south for that to have been much of an impact. Um, it just a rainstorm, and actually we've had much worse rainstorms just as a summer rainstorm. The only difference was that this was kind of a clousy, lousy day all day, and uh, which, as I've mentioned before, I don't really mind because there's so much sun down here all the time that it's kind of fun to have something that's not quite as bright and, and sunny. Um, I tended to want to have a nap or read a book, <laughs> but finally about four o'clock I got up and I said, I got to do something that's a little productive here. And so I went out and I made that wreath, the puffy wreath. So I will share that picture with you. And then when we go to decorate it, I will bring it down and bring the camera there. Honestly, it's so big. I'm going to have a hard time filming whatever I put on it as I'm putting it on. But um, I'd be interested in some suggestions of what might look good on it. I, I know the ribbons, I have to go to Craft Outlet uh, to get some Christmas ribbons. Although somebody has shown uh, their Sam's Club with all of their Christmas ribbons out. Now, I was just at Sam's um, last week, and they didn't have anything as far as their Christmas decorations out, the one that I have here in my town. But I will check again because they have a lot of really nice Christmas ribbon and they're big bolts. So you have plenty of ribbon if you were going to make bows. And I have about 13 wreaths that I hang outside. And I'm thinking of putting new bows on all of them. The bows that are on them were only made last year, but I just would like to try something different and maybe put a little mesh around a few of them and so on and so forth. So that's something that we'll have to start fairly early. Um, one of the reasons, by the way, that I made that Christmas wreath is uh, that in our community, there is a craft fair type of thing. Uh, we have an arts and crafts group here that operates in the season from November to April. It is huge. There's over 400 classes offered, and of everything you could think of, from pottery and and um, ceramics to broken china to whittling to jewelry to cra uh, cards. I mean, there isn't a craft I don't think that you could mention that is not offered here. 
and for very negligible amounts of money. Uh, some of them a little more expensive, some of your jewelry making classes because they pay an outside instructor. But 90% of our instructors here are residents here. They're just very talented people. Uh, I did one class one time on um, creating a photo album. And so that was kind of fun. I don't intend to do any classes this year because I'm still busy with one more year on the board. And uh, But I do uh, enjoy seeing what's being done. And of course, my position is in charge of all the activities. And so I'm, I'm quite aware of what's going on with the group. Um, but anyway, they do have a craft fair where anybody who's made anything, who's a member of the arts and crafts group, can set up a little table and put their wares out. So I thought if I could get a few, uh, it's only for one day and it's only maybe for three to four hours or something like that. It's not a huge thing. So you, it's not like you need tons of product. Um, but I thought if I could get a few things together that I might get a table and, and do some, uh, see if I can sell some of the wreaths. I enjoy making them. I really do. Now I did sell five football wreaths, but, um, the problem is I really enjoy making them. I enjoy the creativity of it, but there's only so many that I could use in my house. So, uh, I do make a, a few. I just gave one away as an anniversary gift. Uh, but I, I, so I figure if I'm going to be making them, all I want to do is <laughs> make enough money to buy more products so I can make more wreaths and do other craft uh, things too. Not certainly as an income producing, um, but it, it's just fun to kind of see if you can make a little something off it. So I'm going to try to do that. Uh, it's in the first part of December. So I'm not going to make too, too many Christmas wreaths because a lot of people will already have their Christmas decorations um, up. But I think what I might even be doing is maybe some a couple of, that would be for St. Patrick's Day um, or Easter uh, or something like that, along with, I think, some centerpiece type of things, mainly for, for candle centerpieces. But So I'm, I'm really thinking, and don't know where it's going to go, but it's going to be fun trying it. Um, I'm really having a great time uh, doing all of this. I, I did paper crafting for so long and all of the other things. And I, I've been crafting off and on, well, since I can't remember when um, if any of you remember trichem liquid embroidery well I had a whole package of trichem liquid embroidery way back when and we used to they used to have parties where you would go and buy product sort of like a stamping up party now only this was like a, a, lick, a paint in a tube that and then you bought um, pre stenciled uh, items that you could paint like a paint by number but it was actually on cloth so it was kind of fun so I did that and I did um, knitting and sewing and crocheting and things like that but I am a retired RN so all of this was done uh, at a part-time basis and so now that I have more time to do it well I don't know how I have had time to work actually but um, now that uh, there is more opportunity I really like branching out and trying other things. I have taken floral arrangement classes here. That's one of the courses that are offered. Um, so I have enjoyed stretching my talents a little bit. And I hope that you are enjoying some of the videos that I put up. Um, I'm trying to get a little better with the video process itself. Uh, I'm going to try with my phone on a tripod next time and see if that works. The problem that I have is the camera I'm using, although the quality, not this one, this one is on my computer. But when I'm crafting and I'm uh, where the wreath area is, it's a camera on a tripod, but it does not have a front facing viewfinder. So I can't see what's being recorded. And so sometimes I'm in frame and sometimes I'm not. Not that it's so great that I'm not in frame. Um, sometimes my bloopers would be more fun to watch if I was in frame. But anyway, so anyway, that's where I am with the haul today. I'm going to come back again a little bit later. 
uh, this afternoon and see if we can get together and try one of those little candle things with the curly method and see if I'm going to have enough uh, mesh to go around. And if I don't, well, then we'll just have to go find some more. So I hope you all are having a great day. This is Tuesday here and uh, before noon time. So maybe I'll get this up shortly and you'll actually see it the same day it's filmed. By the way, don't pay any attention to the ironing board in the background. I don't iron, no. <laughs> if, if it has to be ironed, you're not wearing it for another six months. Um, but I did actually iron a pair of my husband's Bermuda shorts the other day after about three weeks sitting on a chair waiting to be ironed. So um, I just thought, well, before I put it away, I'll check and see if there's anything else that has to be ironed. But uh, that's not my favorite chore. So um, so that's all I've got to talk about today. I Oh, there is one other thing. Um, what I'd like to do as part of my video series is um, a little bit of entertaining video. Um, we like to entertain and do entertain a lot. And in this particular community in season, uh, there's a 1,112 homes and there's two people or more in every one of them. So it's a lot of people. A lot of entertaining goes on. A lot of it is casual cocktail parties, um, but we do do a Christmas party and we also like to have small groups for dinner. And by small groups, I mean there's about six of us total around the table. I think it's a, that's a nice size group, a nice size for entertaining, and it's not overwhelming. And when I do... Um, Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner, it, it is a little larger, but most of the time it's six. But what I would like to share with you is some of the ideas and tips that I have learned of how to enjoy your own dinner party. Um, very often we go to visit someone in, for a dinner party and you never see the hostess because she's stuck in the kitchen the whole time. And you're out talking to whoever else is there and is having a fine time. But the hostess is not hearing anything that's going on, and, and she's just busy working in the kitchen. So I would like to show you a couple of tips that we have, that we've used, of how to enjoy your own dinner party. So I'm probably going to do that about once to twice a month, um, the, because I'll be doing some of them as a sit-down type dinner, and some of them as just some easy... Uh, quick appetizers. In the South, you have to be ready to feed somebody on the spare of the moment because that's what Southern people do. And although I'm not originally a Southern person, I have been one for 32 years, so I've become a little bit acclimated to that. So I have some tips for some different type of hors d'oeuvres, too, that you can have ready to roll and in the freezer, pop them in the oven while you're talking, and enjoy your visit. So uh, I will be doing one of those. Um, I haven't set up the schedule for that yet, but let me know if there's anything in particular that you'd like to hear about as far as entertaining. And I'll see if I can come up with some of the answers. So anyway, rambling on and rambling aside, I'm closing out and I will see you again a little bit later when I have uh, gathered all of my product and we'll try out this little candle holder. So until I see you again, everybody have a great day. Have a great afternoon. Stay safe and play nice. See ya. Bye bye.